Evening guys, welcome back to The What Life. This evening we are doing a race Watopia. Basically it is the tour of Watopia on at the moment and they are hosting a few races in conjunction with that. And for one thing that means double XP, I think. Well, I definitely was getting double XP for some of the race. I really like that pink map kit on the left. Uh, oh, you might not be able to see it there, just there. Um, anyway, just coming out the pen, obviously there is a huge amount of people in this race, which was cool, but it was always going to be pretty tough. This is Beach Island Loop and it's two loops. Just keep an eye on the screen. Uh, a few guys that take a left coming out of here. How does this even happen? How do those guys veer off to the left? Those four just disappear off on a completely different route. Anyway, <clears throat> so 147 people. This was a tough race. I have, I feel like I'm making improvements and hopefully you'll see them as we kind of go through this race. I last a lot longer, so it definitely feels like we're moving in the right direction. To give you some info about the course, we are dealing with 16 miles, what's that, <clears throat> in K, that's 26 kilometers basically. There's very little elevation, it's 100 meters over the uh, two loops, so double, double loop of the beach island loop and obviously we're racing this cat b um and first and foremost i think my positioning is a ton better every time uh, i've done a race in cat b so far i've basically just been trying to suck some rubber at the back of the group and a few people have said that that's not the best place to be in terms of the draft and i agree obviously i wasn't disagreeing with you it was just i wasn't in a position to be strong enough to sit anywhere other than the back <clears throat> but what i did do this time is i made a real concerted effort to get myself up to kind of where I am now, which is, you know, one or two or three people off the front of the group. And then it kind of feels like you're being pushed by a few guys behind you, as well as having a few guys in front to create the draft. And it definitely felt like that made a difference. And there are a few key moments when I try and put a bit of an effort in to get back into that position. Because <clears throat> when I'm sat at the very back of the group, just trying to hold the back wheel, it doesn't feel like I'm getting the most benefit from the draft. There's no one behind me kind of pushing me forward. So I made a real concerted effort. And for some reason, although this is a B race, although there is 150 people participating, the first lap on this didn't feel like super spicy. It was kind of like a mild spice, which was quite nice. Lap two is a different story, though. That was that was spicy. So stick around for that. But the first lap didn't feel like it was super spicy. It felt quite comfortable. My heart rate was quite manageable. Um, I'm, I'm going to, at this point, point out that I did an FTP test this morning and there'll be a YouTube video on it tomorrow. So go and check that out if you are watching this <clears throat> or if you're watching this in the morning, there is an FTP video out um, where I've done my latest FTP test after training for the summer. So that's a, a good little update for you. I won't give anything away. But going back to the race, I made a real effort to make sure that my positioning was not at the back of the group. As soon as if I'm at the back of the group, it's because I am dying a death. So I put a little, uh, a bit, a huge effort, like a real effort to get myself positioned a little bit better. Obviously, a couple of times this means that I've managed to kind of like cycle through the group by mistake. But then I correct that a couple of times. So if you have raced this race before and there is not much elevation in it, <clears throat> but there is this little naughty climb that is uh, the gravel climb. I'm not sure what it's called, but I knew that this one was coming. So you can kind of see me hopefully just move up a little bit in the pack because I knew that this is going to be a tough climb. I don't want to be at the back for this. <coughs> so I put a bit of an effort to get further forward um, and it kind of paid a few dividends because I think my positioning was, was good. I think I've climbed this well. And uh, one of the big takeaways for me is I'm just able to put in slightly longer sustained watt efforts and then ride them at the top so that the improvements are coming guys and if you you know if you if, if you're going to do one thing if you get bored of this just go and check my power curve at the very end because again <clears throat> there's definite times when i am pring my power curve so and that's bear in mind i did an ftp test to failure uh, earlier so my legs were like definitely full of lactate um, I definitely felt that on this race coming into lap two I was just trying to hold on but these are massive ben massive benefits and things I'm taking away that I'm really kind of actually getting quite proud of because 
<clears throat> even though the training is getting harder and I'm, I'm being more structured with my training, so I'm doing more workouts, I'm making sure those workouts count. So as, whereas before I'd probably kind of do a couple of Zwift races and then some rides and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm doing workouts and Zwift races. <coughs> I'm doing workouts and Zwift races and I think it is making all the difference. I'm going to be way more structured about it, more considered about it. So I've done a pretty good effort of, of kind of holding it up that hill and kind of holding, you know, a reasonable position. And when, when things kind of break down and stretch out as they have here, um, you know, positioning is, is kind of everything. And I found myself in a pretty good position by no mistake. You know, I am working hard to be there, but um, I, I've paid enough attention to be in a good spot. And then I can just ride back into the group. And then obviously, again, you know, my focus was not on making it back to the group and then sitting on the back. My focus was getting back into the thick of the group, getting the meat of the <clears throat> meat of the group. So we're going to skip through the rest of that or the, the most of that lap, because like I said, there's not a huge amount of elevation in this course. So we're going to dive into the points that are kind of the little game changers in the route. And this is the last little roller before we head back down through um, the town to cross the start finish for lap two. Again, I'm definitely feeling a little bit stronger when it comes to putting in those little efforts and putting little digs in, building up the watts, holding it, and then riding back into the group. Definitely feel like that is something that uh, I am developing and working on. You know, put the effort in and then hold it at the top and then keep working. So I don't know what necessarily, work, not what, I don't know which particular workout is helping me the most when it comes to that or whether it is just the fact that I'm doing you know I'm just being proactive and doing races and doing workouts I think it must just be an amalgamation of all the training and cycling that I'm doing because it definitely feels like that is paying dividends now and I am getting kind of reaping the rewards I can hold little kicks and little digs and little efforts a little bit longer and then I can also just kind of keep moving saying that guys you do see me die a bit of a death well you see me die a death on on lap two but until we get to that point things are going rosy and it's all looking good i think the uh, if you do get a chance to watch the ftp video that I've, i'm going to put out then you know i think it points uh, it points to a lot of positives we go over kind of things like cadence and heart rate um relative to the other ftp tests i've done and kind of just assess like the changes in my cycling since the start of the summer, start of the summer, which has been very interesting, and it's kind of like a real telltale sign of where the development has come from. Again, just coming out the straight, there is a small dig up this climb. Position was everything, and you can kind of see, well. The nice thing is you can't see me, is because I am in the thick of this, and that's where I want to be. Like I've realised that, you know, if I'm sat right at the back, just trying to hold a wheel, it's not the place to be. So. I thought like, the positioning was a little bit better. I'm going to give you some wattage stats for the race. Um, I held 271 watts for a 3.5 watt average normalized to 281. And my 20 minute average was 3.7 watts per kg. So it's, that's all pretty good going. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And even though I lose the group, I think if I managed to stay with it, I don't think that my wattage would have been too much higher, maybe 3.6 watts per kg average rather than 3.5 for the for the ride because obviously sat in the group, it's a little bit less work, but I think it would have nudged it up uh, a, a tiny bit. So we're going to kind of kick through the race here. We don't have to watch kind of every little bit that kind of goes on, but the big key point is about or the big key moment is about to come up which is that dirt climb once again and having done it the first time i knew that this was going to suck i knew it was going to be really hard and <clears throat> the group has thinned down a little bit but i don't think that's kind of made too much difference to riding position and things like that but i did know that if i couldn't hold the group on this climb then i was you know that was going to be kind of game over i was going to just get dropped off and have to just uh ride it in as a as a solo or with a little kind of tail off group but the takeaways from this are you know we're 21 minutes into a ride the second lap was way spicier than the first so the pace picks up which for me makes it obviously a bit harder because then the average pace is just that little bit closer to my lactate threshold my lt2 which kind of means that if anything kicks over, so if we get to a little burr, we get to a little climb, uh, a little punch, then that's harder for me because I don't get to recover as much because, you know, 
as soon as we are going and or as soon as we are working on or around my lactate threshold that's not recovery for me that's just like continually producing lactate and just making it harder a hundred percent i've never felt lactate like it like going up this little climb i think a combination of doing an ftp test and going to failure and then doing this kind of <laughs> really was a struggle um, there were some guys in the chat that were just checking on me, which I thought was very nice, guys. I always appreciate that. I love the, <laughs> I love it um, when guys are just asking me how I'm doing or whether I'm still here. I'm always doing my best to try and reply. If anyone asks if I'm still in the group, I will always reply um, yes or no. And uh, luckily enough, when people did ask this time, I was able to be like, yes, I'm still here, but it won't be for much longer. So here it is, our little dig, and the wattage builds up, and we obviously hit that kind of like 450 watts is just you know and try and hold that i'm not sure how long we hold it for it must only be like 30 40 seconds at the most but it feels like longer it feels like kind of like real hard work but this was definitely a dig that lasted a bit longer and it was a little bit harder than the first time round. and this was kind of like the moment that i realized that Although that I'm kind of on the cusp of kind of being, you know, quote unquote there, I am still not quite there because once I made it to the top and I have to put like a real heroic effort in, like at this point, I'm thinking every time we do these climbs, I'm basically looking at the mini map top right to see how many people are behind me, like how much room do I have to just keep dropping back and just, you know, maybe the group will kind of come back together. That's part of my, my thought. But the other part of it is like, well, you know, keep moving. You've got to stay with the front group because if there is a break and you're on the wrong side of it, and this is what happens is that it looks like there might be a little break on the mini map. I'm just kind of like half an eye on what's happening in front of me, half an eye on the mini map. And I kind of got to work out between the two what I want to do. And then you kind of see that I'm just about at the back and it does look like a break is forming. So I have to, I don't have to, but... I decide that I'm going to do my utmost to try and ride with this front group and that just put that little effort in to kind of kick through. Guy, Also, on, on another note, I'm very close to level 32 and I'm pretty sure you get a Pinarello F12 or something. I can't remember what it is. So I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> but I put my heroic effort in and my heart rate starts hitting 169, 170, which is time for me to melt. And that is kind of like I, I don't have any more room <laughs> You know, there's no more room once we start getting up there. There's no there's no space left for me to go. That is basically my top gear. I have nothing else to give. And <clears throat> this is when it kind of becomes a bit of a nightmare for me because the guys just not, you know, hold the pace. They sustain the pace and I just don't have any room left. My heart rate is not recovering. And I just kind of realize that even though I've made it and stayed with the break to this point, guys, 26 minutes, pretty happy with it. And, you know, I'm not really going to survive too much longer. I think I dive in the chat and just shout that I'm off. And then I let the group, I let the group kind of disappear off into the distance. There's, there's me done. Um, but stick around because I'm going to show you the finish. My A, I put a little sprint in and then B, uh, you can have a look at my power curve because things are improving and we are getting there, guys. So two seconds and we're going to dive into the finish sprint. So first and foremost, I very much like have been a person who hasn't worried about sprints because I just haven't had the capacity to do it. Every time I've raced, I just haven't had anything in me to get to the finish line and put an effort in. But that is kind of changing now, guys. Now that my fitness is developing, my strength is developing, and you know it's not the world's greatest sprint or even a half decent sprint by any stretch of the imagination. But I am able to put an effort in at the end, which you know I'm pretty happy with. So. You know, that is definitely another takeaway. And that's something that I'm going to almost begin to work on soon enough. Quick look at the power curve. And there are definite points in and around that kind of, uh, well, 16 and 20 odd minutes where I do PB. I will see you guys on the next one. 